my name is Tom Dunn. Today's in service is on the uh, TXP high frequency ventilator. Um, what I'm going to start out with is the uh, Phasetron. This is the Phasetron and this is the actual TXP ventilator itself. And the, uh, the Phasetron is actually the interface between the patient and the ventilator. And uh, the way it works is there's uh, one white line coming into it and this is the inspiratory limb. Then there's a red line which is the monitoring port right here. Um, on top here we have a uh, entrainment port and then that actually pops off and then next to that we have a peep knob and the way that the peep knob works that controls your mean airway pressure and then there's a port right here for feeding in nitric oxide so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, take apart the uh, phasotron and, and uh, just to show you how the uh, how it comes apart and some of the different anyway components. so this is the uh, venturi right here and the venturi goes inside the phasotron and bounces back and forth and What's kind of a little bit unique about this venturi, there's a little hole right here, there's a spring here, and then there's at the end here, there's like a little uh, donut gasket. But the uh, concept is the air comes in through the white line inspiratory limb and goes through this hole in the venturi down through the trachea, down into the lungs, uh, through the alveoli, and, in, and spirals back out through the alveoli, back into this uh, chamber here. And uh, what happens is, is this venturi changes and, and adjusts with the lung compliance. So if the lung was real stiff, we'd have more back pressure coming back into this chamber and that would cause the venturi or really this rubber diaphragm not to it'd cause it to back off and not be as forceful as a push, just as if the lung became more compliant and it would absorb more. Um, this is going to push a little bit harder. So the term uh, fluidic clutching was developed by Dr. Bird and, and that's how this venturi changes with lung compliance. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and put that into the phasotron and then T on the inspiratory limb. So anyway, again, this is the uh, phasotron. This is where the uh, AT tube will go. So it will normally go inside the incubator with the patient right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the TXP ventilator. The uh, way that the TXP works, fairly simple device. Um, well, there's actually three things that we do when we uh, set up a patient on high frequency. One, we'll set the uh, mean air, well, we'll set the uh, frequency right here. Then we'll set the mean airway pressure. And then the third thing that we'll do is set the amplitude, and that's based on chest wiggle. So uh, um, the way that the uh, TXP is set up, there's two knobs down below. And these are the only two knobs on the uh, ventilator. So one says amplitude, and this is just like creating tidal volume and the other is, is a frequency and then the frequency counter which is right here you push this button in and uh, zero pops up so uh, this button is only good for five minutes there's four AA batteries in here and then this is the manometer here and this is just a duct port to kind of reset the manometer so um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give you a uh, scenario where we're going to take a patient say for instance off an oscillator and convert them over to the TXP and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, say if they're on an oscillator and the scenario would be that they'd be on an oscillator with a hertz of about 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, uh, a hertz of 10 would be a rate of 600. So to convert them over here, we'll typically drop the rate down by maybe 25, 30% because the difference between this device and the oscillator is this has passive exhalation as opposed to the oscillator having active exhalation. So we want to slow the rate down to give the patient time to exhale. Okay, we're going to convert the patient from the uh, oscillator to the TXP. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the amplitude knob. And um, as I said earlier, these numbers don't, uh, they're just a reference point. So what I'll typically going to do is start this up around 10, 12 range. And uh, just to give us some flow, so amplitude again uh, controls your tidal volume or your flow. And I'll set the frequency, and I'll probably set the frequency, I'm going to set this up around 10 or 12, but uh, ultimately I want to adjust this down into about the 400 range, so around 400, 420, something like that. And we're just above 400 now, I think 417, 437, 420. So I'm probably pretty good on my frequency. And then we're going to match the uh, the mean airway pressure and to keep it simple I don't know if you can see on the manometer right here but we're uh, probably around 26 28 something like that so I'm going to adjust my manometer down to to about 20 okay to uh, adjust the mean airway pressure on the manometer here 
what I'm going to do is dial my peak knob counterclockwise. Right now, the uh, medium wave pressure looks like a uh, well, maybe a 26, 28 range. So if I want to decrease my mean airway pressure, say down to 20, what I'll do is I'll touch my uh, my peak knob here, and then I'm going to tweak it back just a little bit. So I'm turning it counterclockwise. I'll take my hand off, and you can see uh, after I let go, it's still adjust a little bit. So I'm trying to get down to 20, so I'm going to tweak it down just a little bit more. And right now, looks like we're right about 20 right now. So, uh, so again, the peak knob is used to adjust our mean airway pressure on the manometer. So we uh, dropped our rate down from 600 to about the 420 range. We set our mean at 20. And the third thing that we'll do is we'll set amplitude. And the way that we're going to set amplitude is by chest wiggle. So if my uh, chest wiggle wasn't, uh, if I didn't have quite enough chest wiggle amplitude, the way to make a big adjustment would be to come over here to my amplitude knob and I can just make a, an adjustment here and it'll make a huge adjustment. But what most commonly most people will do is probably, if I want to get just a little bit more amplitude to kind of fine tune it, the easiest way to do that is to decrease my frequency. So I'm going to drop my frequency or drop my frequency down just a little bit. And as you can see right now, it's increasing the amplitude. So, uh, so that's kind of the, the, the quick version of how to use the, uh, the TXP. Um, in addition to that, we have a, uh, a setup guide for different disease processes that we'll follow, and uh, we'll cover that in more detail later. Uh, thank you.